Cameron Miller and Taylor Young. Taylor Young is here with me, Your Honor. Diane Lefker, limited license legal technician. All right, and Mr. Miller, I see you're here. Good. Just a moment here. So there's a, a motion for temporary orders, a motion to appoint a guardian ad litem, and then um, the motion was to terminate a restraining order. I think procedurally where we're at is there's a temporary restraining order and we're here today to actually hear the motion for the restraining order and yes, however sir. that is entered if if it's entered yes your honor and then the motion is for the hearing on the 27th it just all of it kind of flowed together okay um i think we need to um hear the evidence on the restraining order first and we typically um, will do that by placing the parties under oath. So, Mr. Miller, I believe you're asking for the restraining order. So, um, I'm going to place you under oath and hear from you first. And then, Ms. Young, I'll, I'll place you under oath and hear a response. Okay? okay. All right. So, Mr. Miller, you want to raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. What is your full name, please? Cameron Christopher Miller. Mr. Miller, is everything that you stated in your request for a restraining order true and correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Tell the court uh, why you're seeking a restraining order against Ms. Young in this case. Well, let me see. Like, how do I, how do I explain this? Um, I've had my daughter for the last, you know, two years being down here. Um, and I don't really have my, I don't have my paperwork right here in front of me. So I've had my daughter down here the last two years of me working down here and me being in Cowlitz County. Um, Taylor has DV stuff going on up there. She has... She's got uh, protection orders against people up there, and I need to make sure that my daughter is safe and in a good personal dwelling and staying in school, and she's not in any chaos environment. You know, like Miss Young had an incident up there at her personal dwelling where there was a DV case. You know, I, I put all that in there, I believe. Um she has, I believe that was her boyfriend or something like that, whoever it was up there. But there was a domestic violence case reported. So she had to go get a restraining order on her ex, whoever named Drew, Drew Surratt or something. You know, and my daughter's seen that, seen that. And my daughter brought that to my attention, not to my attention, but also a teacher at school and the teachers called the CPS worker and the CPS worker is now doing do, doing her job on that. Okay. So you're you're saying your daughter witnessed the domestic violence between uh, Ms. Young and, and this Drew person. Yes, she had witnessed something to come back to me to tell me and to bring it up to a, a teacher at school to where the teacher thought that that's what was going on in our home, which I had to correct that me and my girlfriend had to correct it at. Okay. It, to where, to where I had to go and hunt down police reports, evidence of the incident that my daughter was talking about. And it is an actual legit event that happened at Miss Young's dwelling. Yes, that my daughter has knowledge of. I mean, she's seven. She's not going to lie. I'd be like, she's not going to lie about big stuff like that. She might lie about taking the candy out of the drawer, but she's not going to lie about something like that. Well, and you were able to document it with police reports, it sounds like. 
Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I submitted everything to you guys. Okay. Um, you don't personally have uh, a fear of Miss Young at this point, is that right? Oh no, I believe she would come to my house and start a whole ruckus. Absolutely, I do. As relating to your daughter, though, right? Do you, or do you feel threatened by her personally? As hard as she would harm my daughter? Yes, by not giving her her medication and stuff like that and not bathing her. All of it. Absolutely, there's harm there. Absolutely, there's fear there. No, there's no doubt about it. Okay, I guess I'm just wondering if you personally feel that you are at risk uh, as a result or relating to Ms. Young. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? Uh, one moment. Oh, okay. So yeah, she she has salted me previously. You know, like in the past, if you guys, I put that in there too. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, Y'all have a chance to respond to Ms. Young when, uh, after she makes her statement. Ms. Young, you want to raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is your full name, please? Taylor Carmel Lorraine Young. All right, thank you. Uh, you've heard Mr. Miller, and I I'm, assume you've read his uh, petition requesting a restraining order. Um, yes. So how would you like to respond? I would like to, I 100% disagree, because what he's talking about, the domestic violence, Happy when Malaya was not there. She's never seen anything. She's never heard me and Drew yell. She might have, I'm honestly being honest about, she could have heard me over talk, talking about something, but she's never witnessed anything. And that's documented in the police report. It's documented in the police report. And she was not there that night. It happened either. Also, the restraining order, there is now one. And I thought it was in the beginning because from history with Cameron, as soon as the police were involved, there was a restraining order in place. Well, when the police came and the next day, a lady called me asking if I wanted to press charges and everything, and that he was going to have court on a certain day. So I was under the impression there was already a restraining order. Didn't talk to him, haven't nothing. Then I get an email after we already went to court from the lady who called me from the court stating that he's been picked up and he was in custody and that there was. A restraining order and so that's where we are now but my kid has never seen domestic violence and has never seen me and Drew fight either but she's seen me and her father fight how long ago was that um probably like last year like when we've been in contact me and Cameron can't be in the same facility without there being issues But as soon as that happened, I let it go. I've had domestic violence in the past from, you've read in the reports from Cameron, and I have not had contact with you ever since I saw those red flags, have not been involved since. And he never lived at the house. You haven't seen your daughter for a few months now? Yeah, about a month now. About a month, okay. And this was right after the last hearing. And this was right after the last hearing. So I think it's in retaliation because he didn't get what he wanted. I've done everything that they wanted. I have my own place. She has her own room. I've done everything. I'm in the best point of my life now than I've been in my kid's entire life. And he's not letting me be a part of her life. And that is the problem. All right, just hang on a moment here.
And he's the one with the warrant out for his arrest. What if he gets pulled over and my kid's in the car? Where does she go? Uh, can I state something, Your Honor? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a moment here. I'm just looking at the temporary parenting plan. Just give me a moment. So, um, Ms. Young, it looks like prior to this um, temporary restraining order being entered, you would see your daughter Friday to Sunday? Yes. And then I know I entered an order uh, requiring that you provide the correct amount of medication for her. Yes. Okay. And then the temporary order on the restraining order was entered and that stopped those visits, right? And I missed her for Easter. I didn't have her for my weekend and she missed my dad's funeral. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give Mr. Miller a chance to reply. Okay, so I want to put on the record that um, there was another court date that she missed just before this one. So I want to put that on the record because I'm pretty sure that the judge put on the record that she wasn't there. Um, and then also, I don't have any DVs. Okay, I want to put that on record too. Miss Young has DVs. I want to put that on record that um, she pepper sprayed me and my daughter. You know, so I don't know what she's talking about, not having no DVs. Um, the city of Centralia put a restraining order on her against me with my daughter. I want to put that on record. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, I don't drive around with my daughter in the vehicle. My girlfriend does that because I drive all day at work, you know, and also my warrant status has nothing to do with Cowage County. Okay. And I haven't been in trouble with the law for over three years now going. Um, and I've been doing pretty good working down here in Cowlitz County and doing tree work and stuff. You know, and my daughter's been doing pretty good down here in school. You know, um, the other thing is, is while well, we're all under oath, okay. Uh, Taylor's declaration is pretty false advertisement. I want to state that. In so what way? Uh, how she says that there was no domestic violence in her household with that uh, with that Stewart guy. You can you can read her declaration, and then you could go and read the the legit police report, and they won't add up. And then you can also go and read Malicia's police uh, declaration. And she'll say, and she'll state that there was never, uh, Drew has never hit her physically or anything like that. That's false because Malicia states to the police that Drew hit her the day prior. Um, and then Rhonda's allegations, those are actually pretty wrong too, because there's recently a new guardian malitum out of Lewis County, uh, I believe uh, like two years ago that Rhonda stated a whole bunch of other stuff too. Uh, and just like Miss Young, how Miss Young um, states that she's in fear for her life or whatever with me and blah, 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 blah. She actually tells the guardian malitum in Lewis County that she's not, and you know, and that we're co-parenting and all this and blah, blah, blah. So she's really out for a reach, it kind of sounds like. You know, and, and I'm pretty sure I put in messages, I submitted messages stating how I didn't force Taylor to sign a, a, a parenting plan, like a mutual parenting plan between us, because she went to a notarize a notary and had it done herself, just like I went to a notary and I had it done myself. She also gave power of attorney and in custody over at a time to my sister and signed the exact same kind of paper that 
uh, me and Taylor came up to sign, but the one with my sister, I did not sign. You know, that's the thing. All of a sudden, Taylor wants to sit there and say that I'm out for like retaliation or whatever the heck she's trying to say. No, I could care less about that. Okay. It's about my daughter for one. So how she's like, she was not here at the last court date. Do I want to state to that? So she's like coming in and out I, of it. I saw that in the, the court record. Thank you. Your Honor, um, I was aware, I thought the court date was on the 31st. And you had already filed. And I already filed my response. Oh, no, she was there. All right, we're not gonna. The, the judge court. asked me, Your Honor, the judge asked me that day on the court date, did Miss Young know about it? And I looked at him and I stated, I said, I'm not sure. Is is this a court date that I sat or did you guys sit? Because if you guys stated it, then she most definitely knew about it. And he went back and he looked through his computer and he looked at me through the monitor and says, You're right, we set this. She absolutely did know about that. All right, let's focus on the restraining order issue. Um, my focus on, on this decision is I want to make sure that uh, the daughter is protected. Um, and so I'll acknowledge that there's a, in, in 2022, there was a temporary um, parenting plan issued. Apparently the parties followed that for a while. Uh, then they came before me because of an issue relating to the administration of medication. I made an order relating to that. Apparently there were visits going on uh, in, certainly into 2023. Um, and then recently, Mr. Young has filed for another restraining order. He's Mr. provided Mr. evidence to Mr. the court Mr. of uh, police reports that suggest that there was uh, domestic violence occurring in Ms. Young's life. Um, and that raises a concern in it, um, in my mind, um, supports a limited restraining order and it's going to be limited as to time um one of the other requests by ms young is for the appointment of a guardian ad litem mr miller objects to that but given um given the allegations of the parties the concern about the domestic violence in ms young's life I think she has some concerns about Mr. Miller. Um, a guardian ad litem is absolutely important in this case. So I'm going to enter a uh, restraining order that will prevent Ms. Young from um, seeing her daughter. I'm going to um, enter it for up to 90 days. Um, it may be that less than that, I'll, I'll change it. I also want her to be able to have telephone or video contact with her daughter um, twice a week during that time. And I say up to 90 days because I'm not sure how long the guardian ad litem report will take to generate. Um, that could take a while, but if it, it, it can be done in 60 days and we can make some decisions then um, probably simultaneous with getting that report, I would lift the restraining order and we would look at um, another type of parenting arrangement. Um, so, well, let's take care of appointing the guardian ad litem at this point. So what we usually do is give three names. And if you happen to know any of these parties, um, you you have the ability to strike one name. So uh, the names are? Twyla Corey, Keith Lawrence, and Heather Call. All right, so I'll repeat that. 
it was Twyla Corey, Keith Lawrence, or Heather Call. Uh, do any of the parties know any of those folks? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So typically, then we would point the first person on the list. So that will be Twyla Corey. I will give her your contact information, and then um, she will reach out to both of you and uh, do an investigation. Um, initially, the order will require that you both pay half of her cost. If you're receiving state assistance uh, or you cannot afford um, her cost, you can file a declaration with the court and I can consider that and potentially have the county pay for your half of the of the cost on that. Okay. Can I uh, can I ask something? Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay, so in Miss Young's part, she did state that like I pay her portion. Yeah, uh, how you just stated that like the county will pay her portion. That's correct, right? Like I'll pay my portion, but I don't want to pay her portion. Um, if she probably asked for that, I'm not ordering that, and I hardly ever order that. Um, I think both parties need to have some um, interest in, in the guardian ad litem. And I think having one party pay for it gives the other party a chance to say, well, you know, since they paid for it, the guardian ad litem is slanted their way. And I, I, don't, I don't want that to ever happen. Okay. So it's very rare that I have one party pay the whole fee. Um, but if uh, Ms. Young cannot afford um, her half, um, then she can, um, again, file a declaration and, and I can consider it. Uh, Your Honor, um, we do have a hearing coming up on the 27th where we filed a motion for an amended parenting plan. That's where we were going to address the guardian ad litem. However, it is very restrictive to have no visitation and phone calls when um, this. Um, domestic violence did not occur when the child was there as noted in the police report and never was on the lease mom should have some visitation um even if it's at her mother's house um where the child isn't being restricted from the mother in light of this other hearing coming up it does take a long time to get a guardian ad litem and we do want a guardian ad litem to be reviewing everything because there is serious history of domestic violence and criminal events um, in this case. There's manipulation. Why is she talking about she was Mr. Mr. Miller, just hang on. There is um, definite retaliation because the order, the motion that he filed was directly after you denied him his contempt. And so she hasn't even had time to have time with her daughter. She should have some visitation, even if it is supervised, if that's what you want to do outside of her home. Because I can stay at my mother's on my visit, and that's surrounded by my grandparents and her. I don't have to be in my home, but I can't go not see my kid. Mr. Miller, um, any uh, thoughts from you on? Um, yeah, I got Yeah, I got a lot of them. Um, so, so for one, I got a question. Is she, a, is that lady a lawyer or just a legal technician? She's a legal technician. She, I'll, I'll oh, let her speak. Is she allowed to speak? Because she is. she is. So when I last looked them up, they weren't allowed to speak. They're just there to do paperwork to help you not speak. All right. Let me ask. So, okay. So the other thing is, is like, uh, yeah, I'm not okay with any of that because her grandparents and her grandmother they you know they all talk bad about me too so and they still allow taylor to take malaya places even if the courts said no so no i'm not okay with that because that's happened in the past all right here's my concern about um i i guess what we, was just indicated is um the record that I've looked at on this motion shows that there is some domestic violence that's affected Ms. Young. And uh, that uh, could affect the daughter. And I need a guardian ad litem to look into this before I feel comfortable making a change at this point. 
So um, I am not going to order uh, supervised visits at this point. Um, I think uh, if a guardian ad litem looks at this and even before the report is issued, uh, indicates that that would be safe, uh, I'll consider it. But um, at this point, um, I'm going to have the two either telephone or video visits um, until we get a, a guardian ad litem um, reflection on this case. Do we need to set specific dates for the telephone and video visits and dates and time, or is that something? Um, I would like. I would like to at least do one video call where she can watch Malaya at practice, please. At Malaya? practice, meaning a sports like practice. So yeah, softball practice. Well, how is she going to be able to talk to her then? I mean, the whole purpose is for her to communicate I with guess that's right. I if guess. you if you want to zoom her in or FaceTime her in to watch her practice, that's great. Um, but I think there needs to be two times where Miss Young can have a conversation with okay. her, her yeah. daughter. Uh, you got what do you got? I mean, yeah, any day that's that's okay with her. Malay is at school from eight to four, and then after that, she's home. Malaya's got softball practice from on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5.30 to 6.30. Um, Ms. Young, what, what dates would work for you? Thursday, and I can do it anytime. Sure, first game. Okay, so Monday and Thursdays at? I think Monday, uh, what time? 6.45. 6.45, 5 o'clock. Okay. Uh, let's do 645 because she's at practice, I think, 530 to 630. Uh, so, next, I'm sorry, next Monday, on, is that the 17th? I believe so. Uh, that's going to be Malaya's uh, first game at 6 p.m. to 730. Well, let's, you know, there may be dates that get in the way, so... Let's say like, no, um, that still works for me. It's fine. It still works for me. How about uh, Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m.? And if the game gets in the way, then it will be whenever the game is over and she's back at the house. Okay. All right. I still want it to occur on Monday and Thursday. Yes. All right. But Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m., Your Honor. Let's do 7 p.m. Okay. Thank you. For how long? And for as long as um, the daughter wants to talk. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mr. Miller, you're not to interrupt that. You're to provide a, a space where um, she can talk to her mother on her own. Okay. In private? Yes. In, right. in, in her room is fine. In private. I don't want, uh, I don't want uh, the child to feel like somebody's looking over her shoulder. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll do a bench order to that effect. I'll appoint Ms. Corey. Um, let's set a review. Well, we have a hearing coming up on the 27th. Yes. Um, okay. I'll just see everybody back here then uh, at that hearing, and then um, we'll set a review out from there. Okay. Thank you, Ron. The guardian ad litem. All right. Thank you. Ms. Young here. Your Honor, my name is David Camisa. I was just hired to represent Ms. Young on this hearing today. Um, I'm putting in my notice of appearance shortly, but I'm prepared to proceed today. Okay. Mr. Miller, you're here. I see... Uh... Mr. Miller's got a motion to waive the GEL fees. That is going to be heard next week. So we'll we'll deal with that next week. Well, I don't see the um, guardian ad litem who is Twyla Corey here. And I wanted to hear from her um, regarding um, um, visits with the mother. But uh, Mr. Camisa, if you want to be heard on that, um, 
You may. Yes, Your Honor, I'll be brief. Here, the court entered a temporary order requiring Ms. Young to only have Zoom visits with the child. Uh, Ms. Young respectfully requests that this order be amended to the original plan with unrestricted access to time with the child. Here, the court had concerns about a recent incident of domestic violence in the Young home. Uh, the incident was involved Ms. Young's new uh, domestic partner kicking in a door. However, this incident did not involve the child. In addition, the child was not present during this incident. Um, either way, there's no domestic violence charges against uh, Ms. Young and the child, nor any convictions involving the child. Um, in addition, we do not have any CPS investigations nor any substance abuse present. Um, Ms. Young has, in fact, missed six weeks with the child pending a GAL report. Um, in fact, a prior GAL report in Thurston County actually awarded her full custody. As such, this GAL report will likely reflect a positive ruling for Ms. Young. Um, it's in the best interest of the child to have unrestricted access to time with both parents, absent any limiting factors, which are not present here. Ms. Young has a two-bedroom apartment and was the sole provider for the child for five years. The child would have its own room. The petitioner was absent from the child's life during this time for five years. The child is, in fact, seven years old now. As such, the petitioner has only been involved in the child's life for two years. Um, the petitioner does not have an adequate residence for the child. The petitioner lives in a two-bedroom apartment with three other children living there. As such, given that no domestic violence against the child is present, and Ms. Young has been the sole provider for the child for most of their life, no, I would ask the court to remove the, the requirements that Ms. Young only speak to the child through Zoom and award her sole custody. Absolutely not. All right, so is it my turn to speak now, Your Honor? It is. Mr. Miller, go ahead. Okay, so I just want to go back on whatever he was saying about Ms. Young being the sole provider for five years. That's wrong. She hasn't been the sole provider for five years, actually. Um, my sister actually was there for two years, okay? And um, he also needs to go back to like the Thurston County thing to where the, the guardian ad litem granted her custody. That's false advertisement, you know, because there was a Thurston County case. There was a Lewis County case. Oh, wait. And in the Lewis County case, they still deemed me the right parent. Okay. So, and then the other thing is, is you can't sit there and say like, she doesn't have any custody. I mean, domestic violence cases against her, because if you need my proof, I will send it right over to you from uh, Centralia PD that states that she did pepper spray her own daughter and me in my own home, in my own personal dwelling. And if you think I'm wrong, that means you're telling me that a public servant's records are wrong. That's not true, you know? The other thing is, is it doesn't matter how many children are in my home or how many bedrooms I have, as long as they are all sleeping properly. I don't have my son sleeping in that room. It's two seven-year-old girls and they both have their bunk beds. Who in their right mind is all of a sudden saying like, that's not okay. It's not like I have a seven-year-old and a, and a seven-year-old boy living in the same room. Absolutely not. So that part needs to be thrown out too, because that's false advertising. Um, and the other thing is, is like I said, the last court date, Taylor's letters of recommendations, they're all false, you know? You can read them and then go read police reports. None of it adds up. None of it adds up. And I've been in Cowlitz County for over two and a half years now. Okay. Um, and I've been stationed and I've been pretty stable. You know, I don't go from job to job. I don't go from apartment to apartment. I'm stable. I'm planted. I'm rooted in Cowlitz County. And I've talked to the GA, the GAL last Thursday to set up an appointment on that. But, and then about like her missing her um, visits on Zoom. Taylor is 27 years old. She was at the last court date when the judge set the court dates to for video Zoom. And she still does not show up. She comes up with excuses. Like if a seven-year-old can can remember the days and the time, 
there's a problem. It kind of sounds like she's honestly not doing what she's supposed to be doing, like I've been trying to tell. Because there's no way in heck that a seven-year-old is able to remember the time and the date of the Zoom meetings. And you as a parent are just constantly, oh, I forgot, it's not working, blah, blah, blah. Well, they're like excuses. Everybody's got them. Sometimes your excuses run out. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Kamisa, any uh, response? Yes, Your Honor, I'll be brief. Um, analyzing the petitioner's recent testimony, he quoted, according to his own testimony, his sister's involvement in her life during that five-year gap, not him. This was specifically referenced within his testimony recently. Regarding the Thurston County GL report giving um, Ms. Young full custody, that's referenced as an exhibit. Um, I could bring it up more, but I believe the court has already seen it. Um, no, you're wrong. Because Ms. Young signed Ms. a paper. Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, one at a time, Mr. Up to me. Mr. Miller, Mr. Kamis is speaking. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I only have a few more things to say. Um, in regards to the petitioner's claim of domestic violence, I would expect him to submit proof of that before just dropping it on the record. I Without have. such proof, it's irrelevant. Um, yeah, moving proof. forward, um, analyzing his personal living situation, it clearly does matter if the children have their own bedroom. It clearly does matter it if doesn't. there's three children living in one room. It matters if we there's do. five people in a two-bedroom apartment, especially when three of them Your are young seven -year -old children. Girls is not an issue. All right, let's stop. Mr. Miller, you're going to stay quiet. Well, Mr. Camisa speaks. Otherwise, I'm going to mute you and you're not going to get any more to say during this hearing, okay? There's a decorum that we're going to follow and you're going to follow it. You understand? All right, Mr. Camisa, continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would just close and say I, I respectfully request that Ms. Young uh, be allowed, allowed time to speak to her children without Zoom and be awarded sole custody as she's had for five years present to this hearing. Mr. Miller, if I were to consider a supervised visit, is there someone that you would trust that could be involved in that? Yeah, my sister. Ms. Young, would you be comfortable with that as a, um, what, what I could do until I hear from the guardian ad litem. Yes, your honor. Okay. All right, I wanna uh, leave the video visits in place. The, the history of the Callitz County case is that Mr. Miller has had uh, primary custody all through the, the case. And um, I have seen the different orders from, I think, Thurston and Lewis County. But I think um, I need to track what we've done here in Cowlitz County until I hear from the guardian ad litem. Unfortunately, she's not here now. Uh, we're, we are gonna be back next week on Mr. Miller's uh, request to um, uh, waive the guardian ad litem fee. And I'm gonna uh, try to make sure that she's here then. Uh, what I would like uh, in the interim uh, today is uh, the 27th. I would like a visit uh, with the child on Saturday. Um, let's go from 10 to 2. And in the future, I may expand that if we continue to have supervised visits. But from 10 to 2, uh, supervised by Mr. Miller's sister. All right. It would need to be like nine to one or like eight to noon. I believe my sister yeah, works at sister. two. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. Ms. Young, can you make it nine to one? Yes. Okay. So we'll do it nine to one. Um, if the 
sister can do the transporting, I think that would be best so that Mr. Miller and Ms. Young do not have to contact each other. Your Honor, would it also be okay to be at my grandparents so my grandparents can see her? He knows that is a safe environment. I don't see a problem with that as long as the sister is, is with you at the same time. Okay. All right, just hang on. I, my... That's fine. All right, then we'll um, check in with everybody next Thursday to see how that particular visit went. And uh, I may consider uh, expanding it a bit at that time. Okay, everybody understand? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. We'll see you next week.